welcome in our videos of practicals and in today's video we will try to study the experiment called resistance of galvanometer by kelvin's method this experiment of resistance of galvanometer by kelvin's method uses the apparatus called meter bridge one very very important thing which we all have to keep in mind is that g by kelvin's method the popular name is g by kelvin's method this is not a null deflection method but it is an equal deflection method it means that in all earlier or other experiments of meter bridge we have been trying to get our galvanometer pointer back on zero when i want to take the reading in this case you do not try to get such a kind of null deflection but the method is an equal deflection method we will try to get the pointer of galvanometer to the same position by touching jockey or even without touching jockey this is the most important thing we all are going to keep in mind while this particular experiment is being done well first of all uh, we will see what the apparatus is and as i have a look at the apparatus here i find that the apparatus is consisting of a 2 volt voltage source it is working on the electrical supply whereas the other thing that you as i said we need is a meter bridge this meter bridge is just consisting of 1 meter length of wire stretched on a wooden board and there is a scale below this so that the readings of length also can be taken at whichever point i am trying to get my null deflection or maybe an equal deflection in whatever case we are performing this particular experiment the next is we have a galvanometer whose resistance we have to decide so that galvanometer is here we have another thing called resistance box here the resistance box is a you see box consisting of multiple resistors and resistance keys are there now in this particular case i have taken out the key near 50 so right now the resistance of this particular box is 40 if i take out 20 more so it will become 50 plus 20 so in all the resistance of this particular box will then be equal to 20 meter 20 uh, sorry 50 ohm what we have to always ensure while using this resistance box is that the keys of the resistance box they have to be tightly inserted and that there are no loose keys in between we also have uh, say a normal key in the circuit this key can be inserted and we have got a rheostat as said earlier in the other videos in rheostat we always have to connect one of the base one of the variable terminals and any other uh, to the base of the wire now what we actually go for is i'll first of all have a look at the circuit diagram the apparatus has actually been arranged in the way we want the apparatus to be so if i have a look at the circuit diagram here if you observe we have got this ab ac is a potent uh, is a meter bridge wire we have got in the left gap a galvanometer is to be connected in the right gap we have got a resistance box which is shown by a variable resistance then from point b we have connected it to a jockey and between a and c the two ends of meter bridge wire we have connected a source of battery key is there and the rheostat is there now i'll just start making my connections as i start doing my connections i'll be a little quick here that positive of the source is to be connected to my point a the negative i'll just keep it open for some time the negative has to be connected to a key the next one of key will get connected to the base of rheostat the next terminal of key gets connected to the base of rheostat the next terminal of rheostat which as i said earlier i'll be using the variable terminal of rheostat to a point c this one then next from here this point c it gets connected to a resistance box while making connections 
I have to keep certain things in mind that we are actually going to try and reduce the contact points so that the contact resistance in the circuit is minimized and that will give you some good readings. So what I do is from here this is the next one of resistance box. I have to get it connected to my point B here, the midpoint of this upper middle point. Then from point A, where the positive of this battery was connected, I start with one more wire that will get connected to a galvanometer. Now three wires, one from this galvanometer, the other from this resistance box and one more wire of jockey. All these three wires I will try to get connected together at this point B. So that instead of connecting this galvanometer wire here, this wire here and jockey here which will add on to some more additional contact resistance. I am trying to avoid my contact resistance here and then my circuit connections are over. As I start making these things, the very first thing I have to start with is you first of all choose some suitable resistance from the resistance box. Now what value of resistance should we choose? We cannot specifically say these things. The reason behind that is different people they have got different values of galvanometer resistances. <coughs> Here in this case I have chosen 50 ohm resistance. I shall start with my circuit readings now. I will put my source on here. So as the source is put on, the light is on. I will insert this key and I find as soon as I insert my key, the resistance of galvanometer is seen to deflect. The galvanometer deflects. We will just try to move this rheostat a bit in such a particular way that the galvanometer pointer can be obtained somewhere in the middle of the scale. Now instead of getting it on to 15, I will get it on to 20 divisions. So I have adjusted my rheostat and got this deflection on 20 divisions. and. Now I have to search for that equal deflection point. If I touch my jockey once near point A here, I will find the deflection goes on the left of 20. Whereas if I start tapping this somewhere near my point C, I will find that the deflection of the galvanometer goes on the right side of 20. Here it is. I just have to now start searching for a point at which if I place my jockey the galvanometer deflection pointer by touching jockey and even without touching jockey would remain the same. So here is such a point where if I touch my jockey on the wire the pointer still remains at the same deflection. So what we are observing here is that by touching jockey as well as without touching jockey I must observe a point where the deflection of the galvanometer would remain the same. Now I have got it here somewhere and I find that this is happening for somewhere at 50 centimeter mark. So my LG, the length of the wire from the point A that is from the left end is equal to LG from this particular point to here it is LG and from your point C wherever my 
balancing point was that length will be called as LR. So I can note down that for 50 ohm resistance chosen, what were the values of LG and LR and then uh, we can just substitute those values in the formula and decide what is the galvanometer resistance. What we need to do is for getting more readings, I can take readings of the resistance as maybe 70, sometimes as 60, 90. These values of R will, as I said earlier, will be depending on what is the galvanometer resistance. Now in this particular case, there is one more thing which we most of the times do and that is we actually interchange the gaps. What we do is that this particular galvanometer, these two connections we remove. We also remove the wires from these two resistance box wires and get galvanometer connected in the right gap, resistance box connected in the left gap and try to once again take the readings. But in that particular case, your reading of length from left end will become LR and that from right end it will become LG and accordingly the calculations will have to be done. <clears throat> so that is the way we are going to perform the experiment. I am not specifically giving you readings in this particular case or in general for any of the experiments because the apparatus and the readings they would differ from laboratory to laboratory, apparatus to apparatus. So that is the, uh, that is the experiment of deciding resistance of galvanometer by Kelvin's method. In our lab, we have uh, for this particular experiment as well as for all the other experiments, my other colleagues Ganesh sir, Sanjay sir and all our laboratory attendants, they have been constantly helping us, arranging for the apparatus, helping us doing this or making these videos throughout for the support of the students. Thanks dear all for watching this video as well.